Are you ready for the toughest challenge on the championship calendar? Welcome everyone to Safari Rally Kenya. I'm Bex Williams, alongside me is Mike Chen and this is Thierry Newville and Martin Vidaga, our championship leaders as we head into the third round, ready to go on run one of Shakedown. to the safari rally it is a huge challenge for man and machine and we've changed the date of the safari rally for this year it's moved back to its more classic date around easter time but we're at the start of the rainy season that could make things pretty complex out there it's going to be a mega weekend that is for sure chenny yeah absolutely bex as, as you said um, the rainy season Thierry Neville just out breaking himself a little bit into that right hand and just running wide no major issues um, but uh, of course first into this stage as well so um, low grip levels for Thierry Neuville and, and just going back to what you were saying you know it's been a really exciting start to the year hasn't it we've had three very unique rallies in, in Monte Carlo Sweden and again here in Kenya the, the toughest rally of them all it's very very tough on the cars and um, you know once we start to move into the rest of the year that's when things start to settle down it becomes a bit more consistent but um, here for sure Rally Kenya is a very very unique challenge it really is and you can follow every single moment of it across 19 stages this weekend by joining us on All Live. On every single platform, you will be able to watch the full coverage of Safari Rally. From what the guys have seen from Recky so far, and I'm sure everyone out there, you've seen the, the images, the, the videos that have come through from Recky. It is going to be pretty hard. There's a lot of rain that's already formed, making it muddy, but also then that dried mud on the surface because it's bakingly hot during the day, up to 30 degrees. So a real mix. We're seeing a lot of rain in the afternoons here at the moment. Mornings dry, afternoons rainy. Yeah, it tends to be very hot in the mornings. The temperature builds and builds and builds. Then we see that, that rain come in and um, it makes it, the, the recce in particular, very, very difficult because we saw, you know, there were some, some pictures just coming through on social media and everything else of just how wet it was and how muddy it was it's very difficult to then make um, uh, accurate notes because when you arrive there during the rally it, it might be bone dry so you know it, it, it's all part of the of the safari rally challenge it absolutely is welcome along everyone wherever you're watching around the world we'd love to hear where you are watching from let us know it's fantastic to be here at the Safari Rally as we wait for Elvin Evans and Scott Martin to uh, to get themselves off the line. Second in the championship. Remember, it's Thierry who's leading it on 48 points at the moment. With Elvin just behind on 45. You can see Thierry just taking a big cut there. We'll see a lot of that this weekend where drivers will very deliberately move the car off the line. Um, because there are just these big planes either side, so you can really use all the road and carry as much speed as you possibly can. That's again one of the unique things about uh, about the Safari Rally. Where we are now, Noldia, the shakedown has been well used. Uh, the drivers are, are very much used to it, and it is representative of what they're going to see over the course of the weekend, but in a very condensed form at just 5.4 kilometres. Shakedown, and I'm keen to hear what he's got to say about the whole weekend. Thierry and some other drivers have had a mega experience so far here in Kenya. They've been up at the Masai Mara on the weekend, gone past, but now the real stuff gets underway. The concentration is at maximum right now. Remember, it's Shakedown today, Wednesday, which is maybe I'm sure caught quite a few people out that it's a day earlier. Stage one begins tomorrow for us. Let's hear from Thierry though. Are you ready for the challenge of Safari Rally Kenya? Uh, not yet, not yet. Still needs to be yeah, a bit better in terms of uh, setup, so we need to work a bit. But also it's the, the moment to get into the rhythm smoothly, so I took it steady, tried to understand the car and see where we can improve. So 3.36.9, the time for Thierry through there. Middle through trees, it's a four-inch shaft, maybe. 
bit long. Need to free that shot, maybe trim up here. Elvin's had some good results here in the past. He's been on the podium twice. Into three left caution middle. Sudden five left sharp door and six right sharp. Maybe very narrow middle. Stage five left sharp clip. Into caution late six right sharp camber entry. Seven left minus of a crest. What do you think his objective is going to be this weekend? Because this is going to be a rally of survival from the conditions that we've seen out there, but everyone still wants to get, obviously, the maximum points. I think it's going to be potentially some surprises on the podium. What do you think Elvin has to do out there? Yeah, I think everybody's... You know, it's always a surprise, isn't it? Because it's such a difficult rally, Bex. You know, it's, it is a... You know, if a rally is going to break a car, this is the one that's going to do it. And um, you know, traditionally we've seen Toyota very go very very well here. They've you know they've proven that that the car is reliable and it's strong here. Um, you know, we've seen podium lockouts. Um, so for Elvin, I just think he needs to keep consistent and just keep banging points on the board. That's what it's about. And sometimes you know it's not about winning rallies. It's just about knowing how many points you can collect. Being realistic, going okay, actually second or third is, is good enough for me this weekend. I'll just want to keep picking up points for Elvin. He hasn't got to win the rally. He's just got to be consistent and, and, and bang those points in. You know, there's so much strategy that comes into it as a driver. You know, you have to, you have to drive really smart. You've got to look after the car. Um, it is, it is one of those rallies. As I said, that if it's going to break a car, this will be the one that'll do it. So you've got to drive, just knowing in the back of your mind, if you've, if you're overdriving the car, then potentially you're going, you're going to damage it, and that instantly brings your weekend to, a, to an abrupt end. Let's see what this time will be then. Slightly slower than Newville there by four tenths of a second for Elvin Evans. I don't think that's a massive drama. You know, it's shakedown and, and, and it is so unique and it's so rough out there. The drivers in this first run are just getting a feel for for what the car is like in these conditions and it's, and it's difficult to replicate it under you know, under testing uh, circumstances. So this is kind of the first time the drivers are getting a real feel for for the conditions here at the Safari Rally and what they're going to be like throughout the remainder of the weekend. And it looked rough, didn't it? Let's cross out to Kiri, who's interviewing all the drivers for us. Good morning, Elvin. It's getting hot and dusty out here. What are your thoughts as we head into the weekend? We know the points haul is important, but it is also a rally of attrition. So where are you at? Yeah, I mean, it's always difficult. It's always the main topic is finding that balance between trying to look after the car and going quickly. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, we may get tricky conditions. So yeah, a uh, long weekend ahead, but of course we've got to, uh, you know, see what we can do and uh, see what's possible at the end of it. And we will see what's possible across the uh, the full three days of competition, four days really. Adrian Formo, fresh off the back of his first WRC podium in Sweden, couldn't be more different uh, in terms of conditions out here. Switch to uh, Oit Tanak now, who's second favourite to win the rally. You have been voting across social media platforms and it is Kali Rovampira who's favourite to win here, Oit is second favourite. Adrian Formo picked up his first ever WRC stage win here in Safari back in 2021. Yeah, that was just a good example there, Bex, of just using all of the line. You can see he was right off the road, right at the right-hand side, and just kind of turned that, rather than having two tight left-handers, made it one big, long sweep in left-hand, just able to carry a bit more speed, 1.6 seconds slower. Um, the other thing as well we saw with Adrian Formo just coming through was he had the snorkel on that car and the regulation state this year that um, the Rally 1 cars are allowed to run a snorkel. Um, so if we do see those, the rain calm, you know, those big water splashes, then the snorkel protects the car from sucking in a load of water. And, and as well at the same time, when it's very, very dusty, having the, the car breathing from up higher, sucking in air from up higher, protects it from the dust as well. To roll off the back of a, a really successful Sweden. Feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. I'm really pleased to be in Kenya. Uh, I missed it last year, so so I'm really, really pleased. We had a lot of spectators before the start of the, of the, the shakedown, also. So, yeah, I'm enjoying. So, yeah, I know it's going to be a tough event anyway. 
You see quite a few kickers that Oitanak was just travelling over there. Formo seems in a, in a good mood, and he should be. Yeah, confidence is so important, isn't it? And after uh, what was a, a phenomenal, you know, rally, Sweden sticking it on the podium, and um, you know, he just needs to bring that into into this weekend. Not ask too much of the car, not ask too much of himself. Just get in it and drive the thing, because you know he knows the pace is there now. So let's hope he can have a uh, a strong weekend. But just coming back to what we saw there, avoid Tanak and those kickers. That's classic safari rally, isn't it? And those are the sorts of things that puts an awful lot of stress uh, through the car, through the suspension, and through the drivetrain as well. You know, you've just got to be aware where the cars land and get thrown around. We'll see a lot of that this weekend. Same line as Adrian Formo, just coming through there, just turning that two left-handers into one long sweeper. And there we go, nine-tenths of a second up on that time of Newville. So Oitanak with a 3.36. Newville 336.9, then Evans was 337.3, Formo 338.5. Now we talk about confidence and, and joy, and we didn't see much more than huge pure joy in Sweden for EP and Jane when they collected the win there. Only their second time competing here at the Safari Rally, though. Yeah, very, very different challenge, isn't it, here at uh, the Safari Rally? We know the place is there. That's a better, a bit of a nightmare last year. We know it's a long weekend ahead. What's the plan for this weekend? It's very much a rally of staying in the game. The clear plan is always to, uh, to stay uh, out of trouble here. And, uh, yeah, if you can do like this all rally, it's already positive. I don't think how much to push, for sure you, you can't slow, drive slow as well, so it's not easy to put this together, but uh, yeah, we need to try our best. Yeah, as Elvin said as well, it's that fine balance between looking after things, being safe, but also still pushing and still setting good times. It's, it is a really difficult one to judge for the drivers this weekend, that's all part of the experience here at the Safari Rally. Yeah, it is, it is a balancing act for sure, as you say, say Bex. But just come back to Sepek and Lappi last year, he had all sorts of issues with, with prop shafts and, and everything else. So, you know, we know that's something Hyundai have worked on. Um, they, they have improved the prop shaft. They've lost a bit of weight out of the car in other places, and they looked at the weaknesses from last year and, and, and focused on strengthening those, and the prop shaft was one of them. So look, hopefully we won't, we won't see Sepek having those issues as well. But as we said, that Hyundai is very, very different from, from what we saw last year, and this is going to be the first real test of reliability. When you make a car lighter, when you make a car faster, the compromise is reliability, isn't it? So, you know, we'll get a, we'll get a real judge of, of have Hyundai got that balance right of performance and reliability this weekend. EP told me in Sweden that actually after Safari Rally last year, the team came up with a nickname for him, which is, to this day, Mr. Propshaft. Yeah. Yeah, he went, I think he went through three. He was four, three or four of them. Four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's some going, isn't it? So. Uh, keener eyed of you will notice some cars are running a snorkel, some aren't. They don't have to run them all the time. They will pick and choose what stages they can run them on. Just run across in front of your car. That's very much what's to come this weekend. Are you ready for the challenge? Yeah, well, I guess we all are, are a little bit scared, you know, what's, what we're going to face this weekend. But what we tried to do, do our best since last year, and uh, let's see what kind of weekend we are having. Yeah, just coming back to what you were saying about the snorkel backs, you know, it is in the regulations, they can run it, but they don't have to run it. There's a performance advantage if you find yourself in a, you know, caught in big water splashes and everything else, that's where you want the snorkel. But there's also a bit of a performance disadvantage as well, you know, you're adding a little bit more weight up high, um, it affects the centre of gravity. There's not a lot of weight in those snorkels at all, but, you know, when the margins are so fine as they are in WRC, was, you know, we're talking about tenths of a second, um, you, you do everything you can to make the car as quick as possible. Well, if you don't need to run the snorkel, you won't run it. It's as simple as that. But on those stages where, it, where, where you know, it might be, we see those fesh, fesh stages where it's really dusty, or, um, or, or if the rain comes, then for sure, bang that snorkel on it. 
Takamoto Katsuta, Kenya, obviously a, a bit of a happy place for him. He's been on the podium twice here. He really just seems to gel with the rally. He loves the, you know, the whole atmosphere here. I'm really keen to see what Taka can do. You know, we've obviously seen some brilliant performances from him this year, some of which obviously haven't led to an outright win, but he's been showing us the pace, which is hugely important. Yeah, that win will come. It is around the corner. He was very, very disappointed in Sweden. I mean, he was really emotional, wasn't he? But it'll he come, was. and it's all part of the journey. It will come for him. The main thing is that the, that the pace is there. You can see a cool-looking snorkel all the way up onto the roof of the car. That goes right over the top. Good morning, Taka. Well, we know that you do well here in this rally. What is the plan for the weekend? Are you looking forward to it? And are you feeling comfortable in the car? Yeah, for sure. It's a little bit big today, so I need to be steady and uh, smart way to through the stages. For sure, it's not, uh, not uh, taking the fast speed is a key for the, this rally, so just uh, trying to be clever. We're liking the helmet design. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's a beautiful vista of, of Kenya on his helmet then. And Daniel Schwist has got an amazing livery on his car, which is just a beautiful, again, vista of, of Kenya. Looks absolutely amazing if you catch that this weekend. There are a few, um, a few special helmet designs this weekend. Thierry Neuville running one as well. Rich Milner, who's, um, he showed me his, um, his helmet yesterday at the, uh, at the airport. That's, I've never seen anything like it. That'll, that'll make an appearance across uh, all live uh, the weekend, yeah. I'm sure. Something special is going to be happening at Shakedown with uh, the team bosses in a, a little while, which you'll see across uh, our social platforms and across all live during the weekend. Stay tuned for that. Kalo Rovenpera, now then, he has stood on the top step here in Kenya. He knows what it takes to find that balance the drivers have been talking about between pushing it and, and looking after it. Yeah, this won't be a rally. This rally will be won by the driver who's smartest, not by the driver who's fastest necessarily, because I think if you're flat out all the time, you'll break something, something will give, you know, it, it is that rough, it is that brutal, so it is It is just, it's a balancing act, and, and we've seen so many drivers in the past, you've been going really quick, really well, and then something breaks. You've just got to look after the car. That's the first thing, not the pace, looking after the car. Let's cross out then to Kiri, who's with Kalle. Kalle, you've also had a good run here in the past, as I was just speaking to Taka. He has, what's the plan for this weekend? Are you ready for the challenge? Yeah, this is a rally where you normally don't expect too much before the weekend, because you never know what's going to happen. So, um, that's my, let's say, plan at the moment. I don't want to wait anything too much. I just want to survive the weekend and see where we are, but of course, um, it has been a good rally for us, so we try to do our best. Sounds like a good plan. I hope so. I think he's absolutely right. He's hit the nail on the head then. You know, no expectations. <laughs> Don't have expectations because they're going to get blown out of the water because this rally is brutal in the sense that it will bite back in so many ways, and we've seen that over the past three years that we've been back here at the Safari Rally. You can't really come into any of these events, like the first three, Monte Carlo, Sweden, or, uh, or Safari, with any expectations, because they are so unique. It's the rest of the year where you can start to have a bit of a plan and go, you know, I'll be, I, I want to win there, or we expect to win there, or a podium. These ones are so unique that you take what you get, you've got to drive, you just got to drive smart. And um, it's been a really exciting start to the year. I personally love the fact that they've moved the Safari Rally date back to the more traditional time. Hopefully we will see a bit of rain and a bit of mayhem out there in the state. Ages. That's what we want to see, and I think it all adds to the uniqueness of the World Rally Championship. 100% agree. First time for everything, thanks, William. <laughs> Greg Warren Munster, first time here in Rally 1 machinery. We saw him in a Rally 2 car here last year. So that'll be its own new experience in itself. And Jordan Serderides is back in action at a rally he really enjoys. Yeah, Jordan, a, uh, a gentleman driver, but he, he loves a challenge, doesn't he? He always picks the toughest rallies to come and to come and have a dig at, so great to see him here. And, uh, yeah, I'd say one of the happiest men in the service part. He's always wandering around with a big smile on his face, so good to see Jordan Zerderid is getting stuck in again. And a big supporter of this man, Gregoire Munster, as well.
Greg, well, how daunting is the prospect of the next few days out here in Kenya? It's crazy. It's, uh, I, I don't know, the Ricky were so, so changing all the time with the weather conditions. We just don't know what to expect. Uh, for example, here there was some uh, very uh, muddy places and here it's all dry. Uh, really just don't, don't know what to expect, but that's, that's Kenya. What do they say again? Caribou Kenya or something like this, that's it. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Kenya. <laughs> Uh, it absolutely is that, and you know he's right. We have absolutely no idea what's going to happen this weekend. So make sure you join us and find out with us what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, just to reiterate that point about the the recce, the conditions were completely difficult, so it's very very tricky to make accurate accurate pace notes. And I think if you go to some, oh, one of us all budged out, breaking himself there. Now that was a fairly big hit into the bank. Hopefully it hasn't damaged the, um, the cooling system or anything like that. So easy to just just lock the car up and uh, just couldn't get it turned in. Take another look. That's uh, Jordan through the yellow boards. We'll grab a word with him. We'll re rejoin uh, Oliver Solberg in a couple. We're going to have a replay. That's coming up for Oliver Solberg. It's two and a half kilometers into the stage where that moment happened. We'll take another look at it shortly. But that is Jordan through a time for him of 3.56.4. And if you are just joining us for the first time, welcome along to Shakedown here at Safari Rally. Let's take a look at this moment again then. Yeah, so he's just outbraid himself. It's a fairly big bang and uh, it's just... There'll be a new sign up there, please. But yeah, it's it's not a. I don't think there's any major dramas there. Hopefully, not too much damage for for Oliver Solberg. And if you're going to do it, that's the place to do it here in, in Shakedown. That's yeah. where you. That's where you're learning the limits, and um, you know. You don't want it to happen in the stage once we're Well, once Jordan, I know you times. like a challenge, and this is certainly going to be a challenge this weekend. You've picked a tough one to come and join us. Yes, we are here to enjoy, also to support the Grégoire. Of course, uh, it will depend uh, on the weather, mainly uh, regarding the challenge. If it stays like that, I think it will be a fast rally. <laughs> Thanks. If it stays dry, but <laughs> not what we've seen so far. So it'll be a lot of heavy rain Sunday. We had overnight rain last night. As you can see, it looks quite dry at that. It's because it's so warm. Temperatures during the day, you know, we are reaching the, the high 20s, low 30s. And those rain showers are so localised as well. You know, you might see it in the middle, in, in one stage, it'll be absolutely soaked in the middle of the stage. The start and the end, bone dry. You know, we have seen that in the past here in Kenya as well. So, um, yeah, it just, dump, it just dumps a huge amount of water, but it might only be across uh, a couple of kilometres. So, um, yeah, it certainly makes for an exciting rally. You know, we saw the front of Oliver Solberg's car. He's, there will be a bit of work to do there. Um, hopefully there's no, um, as I said, the cooling package is okay. I'm sure that the guys will, will rebuild that anyway. It'll be a new bumper. Um, but um, if you're gonna do it, this is the place to make the mistake. You don't really lose anything from it. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of a little bit of work for the, uh, the Top Sport crew to do, the Skoda crew to do um, back in Back in remote service. See, it's just just broken the bumper. There's, yeah, I mean, it's it's all a little bit bent there, but I don't think, yeah, look at the radiator. Yeah. It looks to be okay, doesn't it? The bars, that crash structure along the front has done its job. The, the radiator looks to be working. protected. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's get his version of events. Great to see Gus Greensmith back. This is where his year starts. Oliver, the bar at the front's done its job at least. What happened? Ah, uh, also a bumpy down the hill there, and uh, just missed the braking a little bit, and then up the bank and then reversing. So, but okay. How are you feeling about the weekend? Oh, it's good. The car is working well, and uh, I'm feeling good. So, uh, we'll see. And in your own language. No, he's not too put off by uh, by that. A bit of wildlife good. already for Gus Greensmith. Straight in there, just running across the road. I couldn't work out what it was. Send your uh, send your messages in. <laughs> Stick them on a postcard. Let me know what it was. Tell you what, we need Thierry Neville. He seemed to be the ace spotter on the weekend up at the Masai Mara. Gus then back to Safari Rally. He missed last year. He was fourth overall in 2021. Obviously in different machinery, but as you said, his season now starts here. That was. Uh, 
that was a good example of what Oliver was talking about because you're coming down a hill and it's all bumpy so it's very difficult to get the car stopped because it's kind of vibrating around on the top of the surface it's not digging in and, and slowing down the car's kind of moving around so um, we'll see a bit of that over the weekend as well you know drivers out breaking themselves but great to see Gus here as I said his championship kicks off here he's in a great place he's done a, he's had a really good solid uh, testing program uh, throughout the start of the year. Oh, just going in a bit hot there as well, Bex. And we're just hearing that Nicholas Seaman has stopped 3.4 kilometres into the stage. Well, hopefully we'll hear more on that, but, yeah, for Gus, it, this is... The, the, the only thing I would say that's real, really difficult for him is this is an incredibly tough rally to start your year on, you know? You're going straight in and, you know, Gus won't have that whereas the other drivers who've done Monty in Sweden will have that feeling already, they'll know how hard they can push the car and everything. And of course, Gus has done a lot of testing, but you just it's just about tempering and getting your mentality right. And Gus will be here to, to try and win this rally, but he has to just temper that, that pace, look after the car. A man, who, again, who knows how to put it on the top step in WRC2 is Kaito Kaitanovic. He is chasing a hat-trick of wins here at the Safari Rally this weekend. Fabulous experience in 2022 and 2023, winning his class. So he has got to be the favourite coming in. One of the favourites, because, uh, yeah, you know, we'll talk about uh, Carl Tundo a little bit later on. Another man with a new helmet design. Let's just have a quick look at Nicholas Seaman through the, the window of Gus Greensmith here. So this was about 3.4 kilometers into the stage, we believe. There he is, okay. Well, he looks to be kind of parked up there. We'll try and get you some more information. I don't think we've been able to get it within the time that we're on air now, but stay tuned across, uh, obviously, the website, our social channels. We'll try and update you with what's happened with Nicholas Seaman. That is Gus Greensmith through with the fastest time. Obviously, uh, Solberg had that issue, that little overshoot. 3.58.2 was the time for Solberg. For Gus Greensmith, it is a 3.49.5. Yeah, just coming back to what you're saying about Kaito Kaitanovic and, and this rally, it is all about experience, isn't it? And tempering your pace, and that's how that man has won this event. Good morning, Gus. A good run through there. Fastest time so far. So, how are we feeling? Ready for the weekend? Yeah, I mean, that felt terrible. I think I missed about three junctions. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. Um, conditions are going to be insane. And, yeah, as soon as that rain comes, yeah, the, the times can swing by minutes. So, yeah, let's see. Joy is absolutely right. Oh, we've seen that across the years. You know, Sleeping Warrior seems to be the one, the stage where we've had the most rain. And for some drivers, it skips them, and then, you know, you'll have a handful of drivers who do get caught in the rain, and then the times just disappear. The surface here becomes something very, very special when it rains. It becomes ice, and it's so hard to keep control of the car. Kind of a plunge into the bank there for Kaito. Don't forget, that is all the information you need on the screen as to where you can find us for the whole weekend. 19 stages. All broadcast live, kicking off tomorrow with a fantastic super special stage in Nairobi. And that's Kaito three, three tenths behind Gus Greensmith's time. And we welcome Charles Munster to the WRC. We're keeping it in the family with the Munsters. Yep, yep. Um, great to see, great to see him here. And um, yeah, the, the Munster name is is very, very strong in uh, in rallying, isn't it? Munster Senior and uh, of course Gregoire and Charles. And there's Kaito at the, uh, the stop line. We'll talk about uh, Munster in a moment or two. Let's hear from Kaito first. 
Good morning, good morning. Now, Kaito, we know you do well here, but what is the most daunting prospect about this rally? Where are you fearing most? <laughs> you never know. This is another rally. Uh, it's not the same rally like last year or two years ago. Even on straight road, you can, uh, you can be out. Uh, so, uh, you need to be patient. You need to be patient, but uh, it's a fight uh, in your head. Because uh, uh, you know you can be faster, but uh, at the same time, you cannot be. Uh, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, it's a big challenge. But I think uh, we are ready with Maciek and uh, with all uh, my team. Enjoy it. Thank you. Here you go. He's, uh, he's standing on good form, Mr. Kaitanovic. His first uh, round of the, uh, the season now. Mr. Munster, he's got some good experience under his belt in the fact that he's got, I think, 62, 63 rallies he's already competed in, but mainly France, Belgium at home. Yeah, this is a very different game. Very di yeah. it's, it's a completely different prospect. Absolutely it is. I'm really keen to see how he manages it this weekend because this is a rally to be managed. Yeah, it'll, it'll certainly show the maturity because he'll know like Kaito just said, you know you can go faster. He'll know he can go faster, but he has to just temper that. You know, you can't drive these cars flat out everywhere. You'll break something, your weekend will be over. And, mm. and it's, and it's <clears throat> to be fair, Bex, it's those drivers who are better at, at just being patient, like Kaito said, letting the other people make the mistakes around you. And that's how you end up finding yourself up towards the top of the leaderboard. So it will be, um, it'll certainly be a, um, you know, a baptism of fire for Charles, but you have to come here and you have to experience it. You have to do it and, and, and get that. And the only way of of, of learning is by is by doing. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it will be really interesting to see how he gets on this weekend. He's in for a real adventure, that's for sure. Absolutely, everyone is here, whether you've got experience or not. I think with with the potential tricky conditions that are forecast for the weekend. They look this wicked is... with the bars and the snorkel on, don't they? They just look really, really cool. I like Proper. seeing them. Yeah, it's just, it's sort of that, that little ode back to the old, olden, golden days. Not that I remember, of course, but you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, you're far too young. <laughs> well, good morning. How are you feeling about your first adventure out here in Safari? Uh, it's, it's quite strange to get a rhythm here. It's, you can go fast, and in, once you have something completely broken, but it's, uh, I think it's a once in a lifetime uh, experience, so. I'm really happy to be there, and I uh, thank you to all the guys that make this possible. And in your own language, please. Uh, it is a once-in-a-lifetime adventure. Here. He's absolutely right. So, Oit Tanak, the fastest man through then on run one of Shakedown for us. Robin Perra was eight-tenths behind, Newville nine-tenths behind. Then Evans, Formo, Katsuta, Lappy, and Gregoire Munster. Then Gus Greensmith at the moment, topping the table time-wise for WRC2 with Kaitanovic next, then Soderides, Solberg and Munster. Let's cross out now then to Kiri. So there we have it, shakedown done and dusted. Safari Rally Kenya 2024 is a go. Well, it all starts tomorrow night with stage one. It's a super special stage in Nairobi. Those cars will be going side by side through the city of Nairobi. Then they move up this way. It's six stages on Friday. Saturday is a mammoth, mammoth day in terms of stage distance. Five stages, but it is the longest day in kilometers that we've had in Kenya since we came back in 2021. And then Sunday, it's a bit shorter and sweeter, but we're still packing in six stages. This weekend is going to be absolutely epic. We're looking at those points now. It is Elvin Evans that's three points off Thierry Nouvelle. Those are the two that look like they are going to be battling out for the championship. But if Boyk Tanak is going to come into play, it is here in Kenya where he needs to get a massive points haul. So you are going to see fierce battles from the get-go. We'll make sure you join us for all of the action throughout the weekend. It's going to be a good one.